So one billion people in the world, one billion out of seven billion people in the world, are food insecure. Food insecurity means that they don't have access to nutritious food. So my team and I were tasked with the challenge of finding a solution to food insecurity in urban slums. Food insecurity used to be thought about making food affordable and available. And so the, the solution was clear. Let's just make food cheaper and more available to people. However, when we traveled to slums in Mexico, Ghana, Kenya, and Thailand, we found that there was a lot of food, and the food was high carb, high fat, and low in nutrition, which meant that issues like anemia, which is not having enough iron in your body, or stunted growth among children were pervasive problems. So now, major organizations like the, the World Food Program and the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization emphasize nutritious food and make it affordable and accessible. We can go one step further and empower communities to generate nutritious food and make it accessible. So we asked ourselves, what is such a source of food that is nutritious, delicious, that is traditional in people's cultures, uh, and accessible. Now, for centuries, whenever humanity has been faced with a great challenge, we've always looked up and plead to the skies for an answer. But today, I ask you to look at the ground, because the answer is at your feet. The answer is insects. Insects are a power food. When compared to a similar amount of meat, they have almost the same amount of protein and a lot more iron and a lot more calcium. In addition, 2.1 billion people in the world eat insects. Of those, 140 million live in urban slums, and of those, 40 million live in regions where we felt we could enter as a social enterprise. But are people willing to pay for insects? As it turns out, all over the world, there are thriving markets for locally appropriate insects. So this poses a paradoxical question. If insects are such a power food, they're so good for you, people like them, people are willing to pay for them, then why is there food insecurity in urban slums? The answer is twofold. One, they're seasonal, which means that they're only available for a few months out of the year. Second, when they are available, they're painstakingly hand-harvested, which makes them really expensive. So our solution is to take seasonal hand-harvesting of insects to year-long sustainable farming of insects. We plan to do this in three ways. First, empower farmers to grow their own insects and transport them to a local hub, which allows us to bring in a lot of supply together. At the hub, you can also breed your own insects, process them lightly, and distribute them to the slum. In order to make sure this would really work, we first went to Thailand, and in Thailand we observed very simple cricket farming practices. We then took those farming practices, made them a bit more effective, and started a our production pilot in Kenya. So our solution is really about taking existing farming practices and making them most, the, the most effective possible, all the while training people and empowering people to be able to grow them themselves. In order to see how this works, let me take you to Mexico. Let me take you to Nezahualcoitla, the world's largest slum, home to four million people with a 38% anemia rate, where 40% of children are undernourished. So how would this work in Nezahualcoitla? Well, outside of Nezahualcoitla, which is near Mexico City, we would have farmers who would grow their own insects, chapulines, or grasshoppers, as they're called there, and uh, they would grow them and then transport them to the hub. At the hub, they would get eggs and fertilizer for, for to take on their way back. And the hub would also breed their own insects and process the insects to make sure they were safe for consumption and of good quality. 
Then the insects would be sold to the distributor, and the distributor would make sure that everyone in Nezahualcoitla was able to afford the chapulines, as they like to call them. When my team and I traveled to Mexico, we met a woman named Julieta. Julieta has a daily family food budget of $3 a day. $3 a day to feed herself, her husband, and her three children. Before, she could only afford 30 grams of chapulines. 50 cents would only buy her 30 grams. Now, with the same 50 cents, she's able to afford 100 grams of chapulines, which means three times more iron and three times more protein, which is so important for her and for her, her growing children. Now, what's really exciting about this is that we can take different insects to different markets. So in Mexico, it was the grasshopper. In Ghana, it's the palm weevil. In Kenya, it could be the cricket. And the impact doesn't stop there. When you bake most insects and roast, roast them and then grind them up, they form a great protein additive that can be added to flour or crackers or chips, which are commercialized foods which are currently making their ways into slums and are plaguing people's wallets and their nutritional profiles. When we look at food security, it doesn't operate in a vacuum. There are many things that affect food security. And right now, more than ever, it's important to find a solution to food security that's resource efficient. Because we have a world in which the arable land, arable land is land where you can grow crops, is decreasing. The population is increasing. The UN estimates 9 billion people by 2050. Food prices are rising, and people are moving to cities more and more. And this is where things get really exciting. As it turns out, when you, ex when you compare insects to beef, it takes drastically less land, drastically less water, and drastically less feed to produce the same amount of protein from insects as from beef. And there's a negligible amount of greenhouse gases emitted. So farming insects for food is great because you can eliminate the seasonality of insects, you can lower the prices, and make protein and iron affordable for those who need it most. 